Okay, so today we're going to talk about the spectral decomposition and commuting operators. <laughs> a spectral decomposition is that for a self adjoint operator, we can decompose it into a linear combination of projections. And commuting operators basically is that the operators that uh, commutes. Okay, so before that, we give some definition. We say two subspaces of a V is perpendicular if all the vectors in W1, all the vectors in W2 are perpendicular. And for projections being perpendicular, we mean that their composition gives the zero uh, map. Okay? So, here's a proposition. Given two subspaces of V, we'll let P be the projection on W1 and P2 be the projection on W2. Then, the W1 perpendicular to W2 is equivalent to P1 perpendicular to P2, and which is perpendicular, uh, range of P1 perpendicular to P2 is equivalent. Because, well, from here, we see W1 is really the range of P1, right? So now we see that, okay, two projections, um, they are perpendicular if only if their range space is perpendicular. Okay, we're gonna use this fact. And the proof is really simple. Um, let me just make this into purple. Okay, so we're gonna focus on this implication here. Now, P1, P2X is P1 of P2X, but P2X is in W2, right? P2x is in W2, but W2 is a subset of W1 perp because everything in W2, the, everything in W2 is perpendicular to everything in W1. So W2 is a subset of W1 perp. But W1 perp is precisely the kernel of P1 because P1 is the orthogonal projection. Right, so P2x is contained in kernel of P1. So this gives you zero. Okay? Now for this direction, mm, now if we pick W1 and W, then zero is equal to P1, P2, W, which is equal to P1 of W, right? If we pick W and W2. Now, since we have this, right? P1, W is equal to zero, which means that W is in kernel of P1, which is in W1 perp. So W2 is a subset of W1 perp. Right. Right. So we have this. Okay. And here we're done. So we're done. Right. So now by the spectral theorem, given the self-adjoint operator and lambdas, um, the lambdas, the real numbers, and the e one e and o and b, right? We we can relabel the lambda i's and the ei's right because the lambda i's were given but they're not necessarily all distinct so now what we did here is that we regroup the one we regroup the one those are the same we denote it as gamma one and all the way to gamma m okay so we have uh, we have delete the repetitions now each gamma i are the spectrum of t right each gamma i is in the spectrum t, and now e i uh, e one with the node e one is the span of e one n until e d one e one one e d one one, which is the corresponding e to the lambdas that is equal to gamma, right? And all the way to e m, right? All the way to e m. So from here, we can see that, okay, for x and ej, tx is equal to gamma jx. You, and you should verify this. this. is really quick. And we let pj be the orthogonal projection operator onto the set, uh, the set ej. Okay. So now the theorem states that, okay, p1 is perpendicular to pj, right? Because e1 is perpendicular to ej. Y is not equal to J. I mean, question one is already done, right? Because E1 is perpendicular to EJ. Because, well, 
because this is an old orthonormal basis. Right, so the EI, EI and EJ, they are definitely perpendicular to each other. So the projections, PI and PJ, they are perpendicular projections. Right, <laughs> which is by, by this theorem we just proved. This thing we just proved, the range, right? Okay. And the second is that the P1 plus PM gives you I. So to prove this, for X and V, we can write X is equal to X1 plus XM, where XI is an EI, right? Because these EI are consist of the O and Bs, okay? And PJXK is I equal to XK if J is equal to K, right? Because if XK, J is equal to K, which means that XK is an EJ. Right, X and E J and P J X K is the orthogonal projection, right? So which is definitely, um, definitely gives you back itself. And otherwise, it will gives you back the zero vector. Why? Because, um, P J and P P K are perpendicular if, right? P J and P K are perpendicular if J is not equal to K, and X K is equal to P K X K. Right. If you project on on E K, right. And here, sorry, and here we use the um the pro uh the projection definition, right? P J of P K X K. Right, she gives you the zero vector because pj and pk are perpendicular. <laughs> so if we apply this function to x, right, it gives you this, right, it gives you p1x1 pmxm, which is x1 plus xm, which is x, which is equal to ix, right. <laughs> so we have this is done. And with this, we can show 3 is true, right. Again, we just write x as, right, so this means gamma 1 p1 plus gamma npm gives you t. And this is the so-called spectral decomposition of an operator, right? For x and v, we write x is equal to x1 plus xm, right? Gamma 1 p1 x gives you gamma 1 x1, right? And gamma npm of x gives you gamma mxm until that, right? Because we have we have this, we have this, right? So, uh, the sum of gamma one p i x gives you gamma one x one plus da 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 plus gamma m x m, and t x by linearity, and those x one x m right by the remark here, right? We see that they're the same. Right? So this is the orthogonal decomposition of an operator. <laughs> and easy by induction we can check t to the k so we compose it t with itself k times which is actually equal to gamma 1 to the power of k and this is the real number power this is the composition power right and this is easily checked by induction and we can extend this further to polynomials right for any q polynomial on r Qt will be equal just Q of gamma 1 p1 plus Q of gamma m pm. And the proof, right, is again followed by this remark, right? Because if, so, okay, so suppose that Q is equal to this, right? Then Qt would equal to this, right, by definition. And we know that I is this, T is this, and until Tk is this, which gives that A naught I, A naught I, plus a1 t a um a1 t plus a k t k right and from here we see that okay we could just we just regroup them right which is uh a naught a naught plus a1 gamma 1 plus a k gamma k of p1 which is precisely q of gamma 1 of p1 right because q is equal to this right I mean gamma 1, gamma 1 to the k, 
right? We have the exact same thing here. A naught, A1, gamma 1, blah, 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 AK, gamma K, of P1, which is this. If others are the same. So we've shown this um, thing. Right? For any polynomial, <laughs> Q of T is just equal to Q of gamma 1 plus da, 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 until Q of gamma M, P M. So here comes the first question. And this question is necessary. And so I think I'll just do it. So here, you just read the problem setting. Okay. And look, let's look at this condition. I think it's clear enough to see, right? So all we have is that we're given a spectrum of T. We want to show that the decomposition, right? If we have, if we have another spectral decomposition in some sense, then they're precisely the, I mean, the, the coefficients, right? They're the same, okay? So here's the proof. So we show, first we show that all the beta i's are the, first we show that all the beta i are eigen, sorry, all the beta i is, the, is, an, is an eigenvalue of t, right? Because we're given a spectrum of t is equal to this. Okay, so first for each beta i, right, tv gives t of i of v, right? And t gives this and i of v gives this. When we multiply it out, right, these qi, qj, they're perpendicular, right? So we have the left is a beta j, qj, v, because qj squared is equal to qj. It's in projection, right? Okay, so we have this. So T of V gives you this. So if this V, if this V is equal to Q I V, right? Q I V, right? And something's gonna happen. So if W is equal to Q I V, which is non-zero because Q I is non-zero, uh, non-zero operator, right? It's non-zero projection operator, yes. So T W gives you this, which is Q I V, right? And uh, the only left is Q I V, right? Because they're pre they're uh, perpendicular, right? So it gives you this, which is beta I W. So each beta I is an eigenvalue, right? So L is less than or equal to M. Now we prove the converse. Is that all the gammas? If you if you are an eigenvalue, then you're supposed to be one of the betas, right? So now we suppose gamma is in spectrum T. We suppose that gamma is not equal to all the betas, and we get a contradiction. We show that T minus lambda is invertible, right? Thus the kernel is equal to zero vector, which means it is not a spectrum, but we assume this is the spectrum T. Right? So this will show that spectrum of T is a subset of this, which gives M is less equal to L. So to show that it's invertible, because though those quantities are non-zero, right, we can construct another operator, namely R. We can just flip them, right? And then we when we multiply it out, right, it goes equal to one, right? Gives you I. So it has an inverse as needed. So we have L is equal to M. So these two are equal. And uh, from here, I'm just showing that all the beta i, all the beta, beta 1 is equal to v1, uh, gamma 1, until beta m is equal to, uh, why is this v? I'm sorry. Gamma 1, gamma n. <laughs> right? Okay, so this is, um, proof by induction right so this is like not that important here right so i'll just go to the next question so this question is really easy you can just take a second to look at the the statement and i'll the proof is easy too it's just routine work right it's just routine work so you can take a look if you want and question three is also routine work if we just uh, look at, okay, we just look at this initial setting first, take a look, and this is the problem, is to show that one, two, three, four are all equivalent, okay? And the answers are really, 
I think this should be straightforward, right? I think it should be easy enough with the polynomials. Three to four is a bit special. We need, need to use the Lagrange interpolation. So suppose that for any polynomial such that QS, RT is to RT, QS, they commute. Then all the PI, QG, and QG, PI commutes, right? All they are commuting. And this is really by Lagrange interpolation. So three to four, right? If you just multiply it out, and we can construct any polynomial we want. The polynomial can be arbitrary, right? So we can just do some polynomials such that the only thing left, this summation is just equal to QJPI, and this summation is really just equal to PIQJ. So the, the central thing is to construct a polynomial, which is by Lagrange interpolation. Um, I think I didn't mention in this series. Or you can just Wikipedia right now. It's really, it's not even hard. It's not it's not that hard to to understand. It's basically like you can construct any polynomial you want, right? And for the one is again routine work. So here comes a a central part of this lecture, right? Is that commuting operators? If they commute, then they have a common uh O and B, and they're all eigenvectors. They have a common eigen eigen basis, right? S is psi i, and T x psi i, right? And the proof of this is a bit tricky, so <laughs> it is really tricky. So first we write T and S in the standard form. Now, the genius move is here. We use i equals to i times i, right? Because they're projections. Right, their projections, and we have our results with projections. With community operators, we can work with the projections. Right, any point we can work with the projections, and from here, right, if P and Q are projections, right, then if they commute, then we have part B, right? We have part B. Range PQ is the range P intersect range Q. And we're gonna use it later. So let's take a look. So multiply, oh, you get this. We define EIJs to PIQJ. So I is the sum of EIJs. Now, by question three, right? One implies four because um, ST and TS commutes, so all the PIQJ commutes, right? So the PIQJ commutes. And this is a projection, right? Because EI equals to, uh, then their product, right? They commute, and they're both itself projections, so their composition, their product is a projection. And again, right, the, by the part B, we have this, the range is an intersection. Okay, so this is what we established uh, so far. So here we make an observa observation if x is in the range of pi and the range of qj, then tx is equal to gamma ix and sx is equal to, to beta jx. Right? Because x is in, if x is in range of pi, it is in the ei in our when with our previous notation, right? And yes, and SX will be equal to beta JX because we have the orthogonal projection like that, right? So, okay, this is done by definition. And now in this sum, we can delete the EIJ such that they're zero operator. And then we consider remaining some of the non-zero operators, right? Because i is non-zero, so at least one of them must be non-zero. But because i is non-zero, right? So, and now we see that p i and q j, p r and q s, are perpendicular for i j not equal to r s, right? And this is just by tr it's just routine work to check. So each E, I, J, they are orthogonal, orthogonal, right? Each E, I, J's, 
each of them they are perpendicular to each other the space right and for each of them we can pick an O and B right uh, zeta 1 ij into d of ij ij and group the all gives an entire thing right we group all of them we group the the o and b for all of them right and since we know that this is true this is equivalent to this is true right because the operator e i e j the e i j the operators are perpendicular to each other right right so if the range is perpendicular to each other so this entire thing implies that this is an orthonormal system right it's an orthonormal system so if if this spans v this is an orthonormal basis for v and this is true indeed by this summation because ix is equal to x is equal to sum of those and each e i j x is in range of e i j right and for each i j right and e i j is in range e i j we make a comp linear combination with the um, corresponding o and b for this space range e i j we can write it as this so x will be the sum of y i j which is really in the span of zeta 1 to zeta n right which is what we need again we have this is an o and o, o and b for v uh, okay we have an o and b for v we group that all together gives an o and b for v lastly each zeta k is in some range e i j so each zeta k is in this, which is in this. So t zeta k is equal to this gamma i zeta k, s zeta k gives you b j zeta k. So each zeta k is an eigenvalue for both t and s, as desired. Right. So this is really satisfying at the very last part of this, and this is all I wanted to uh, include for this lecture. And I'll see you guys next time.